Hi guys, uh, Nixie Clocks. I feel some discomfort towards them as an electronics project because they're such a cliche electronics project. Uh, they kind of seem 90s to me, like projects entirely based on LEDs. But I think I can add some originality to a project and make it also fairly simple. I'm going to modify one of these into a clock without any modification at all, and that's the trick. So despite being repackaged, the uh, package was fairly well done. And uh, this is the original photo from the eBay listing where I made the purchase. It's a Hewlett Packard 7 digit counter and it likes to power up displaying the digit 8 for some reason. I quickly whipped up a microcontroller program that would send a thousand pulses for every push of a button. The counter is in a cumulative mode now, it doesn't have a gate timer active, so this uh, count will keep accumulating as long as I push the button. The microcontroller board isn't built for this occasion, it's been a few different things. It's been an infrared remote control and it's had a serial port for some reason, so all I've had to do is add a cable to it and write software. It's a PIC 16F628A, low power, so it can run from two AA batteries. Yep, they're nice, but I'd much prefer to have this vintage collector's item itself rather than start with the Nixie tubes and make yet another Nixie clock. So this video is about how we can make this frequency counter into a, a real-time clock without modifying the frequency counter itself. And just to recap, what you're seeing here is a thousand being added to the count by a microcontroller sending a thousand pulses every push of a button. And looking at the software for that microcontroller, it's in two sections. The bottom section just sends a pulse every time the uh, if-then statement is passed. If there is a pulse in the uh, send pulse variable, so if that's above zero, we send a pulse. And everything above the line is uh, to detect the button, a button push with a pretty weak attempt at button debounce. And if the button is pressed, it will add a thousand to the send pulse value. So the next stage of the project, or the first stage of the real project, really is to add a reset output from the microcontroller to a port at the back of the device. Uh, via a DC solid state relay that I have there and now I can send the correct number of pulses that I want displayed every second so the 59 will roll over to 300 and it looks like the counter has overflowed where what's really happening is uh, I'm sending the 300 old pulses for every second and then doing a reset so it's counting the whole number that you see for every second So looking at the program again, the bottom part that sends the pulses is exactly the same. The button stuff has been removed from the top and I've added an interrupt routine on a timer so that it knows when a second has passed. And then uh, for every second we do a reset. We pull the reset line through the very slow relay so there's a, a big delay time there. And then we add up the minutes and seconds that we want displayed and send the number of pulses. This proves that a real-time clock could be made right here, uh, but there's still a number of ways that this uh, could be improved as a project. So up until now, the, the little condition that sends pulses there hasn't been changed, except this time I've reduced the delays uh, between sending each pulse to 10 microseconds. 10 microseconds on, 10 microseconds off. The top part... Um, I've made a, a significant change so that for every second it will just send a pulse so that it will count up to 59 naturally so the seconds won't have that huge count. It'll only do that on the minute when it has to appear to overflow. So now you'll see a count displayed and every second we're just uh, receiving a normal pulse, a single pulse, and then a reset and a recount up to 500. And then we go back to just sending the single pulses again. So this video was made in a single day with just two short sessions where I could play with software and hardware um, and a, a big busy period in between where I couldn't do much of this and I'm recording the audio at night. So just a hint at the next of two more stages. Say you'd counted up to 59 and for the next cycle you'd like to increment to 100. Would it be quicker to reset and count another 100 pulses? Or would it be quicker to just add another 41 pulses so that display would read 100? 